Okay, so we've talked about the tools and the prep work is next, which prep work for me is where you do your space, collecting your items if you know what you want, and then like sitting down in the space where you're gonna do this stuff. Um, there was a, so Pamela, who's not here, okay. Uh, Pamela, she, she brought up something interesting and I forget that people do ceremonial circles still because I have never been in that world. But a ceremonial, a ceremonial circle would be like really official. You know, you might actually draw out a circle. You would call to the four corners or you would do the four elements. You would really set up this stage in ceremonial circles. Uh, I am a practical magic practitioner. <laughs> my stuff is on a whim. I go outside in my yard or I go to a park or I go to the beach. I mean, I just... Uh, and the only circle that I cast is like this. So if you want to know more about ceremonial magic, where you want that whole effect, the big, big thing, which is a lot to remember also, just warning you guys, um, you're going to want to look into actual Wicca. So Wicca describes the rules and the boundaries for creating the sacred circle, for reading uh, their, their, I was going to say mantra, it's not mantra, their thing, their statement, I forget what it is, gosh, I'm not Wiccan, I'm, I'm just a witch. <laughs> um, but so when you, when you get to the place where you want to do your spell, you find your area, you're going to try to find the most grateful part of yourself that opens up your heart. This comes through meditation. This is why I talk about like the self-discovery is really important so that you can quiet your mind so that you can find that inner peace so that you can just relax and breathe and get ready to really focus your intention on the thing that you want to change in the world. So you're, you're bringing and raising your vibration to change the vibration of other things out in the world. That is the spell. The, the magic is the act of manipulating energy in our environment. The spell is the things we do to create that magic, to manipulate the energy in our environment. So all these words really flow together with the spell being the things that you put together the magic being the effect, that's what goes out into the universe that changes the other energy. So when you get to your space and you've, you've decided like this is a perfect piece of grass or under this tree is amazing or the beach at the rising moon is perfect for me. Now you sit and you find your peace in yourself because the last thing you want to do is have, you know, things flooding into your head like a show or a bill or somebody you didn't call back or your phone is dinging because somebody's texting you or calling. I have to shut all my stuff off, put it in airplane mode because without a doubt, my sister will text me <laughs> in the middle of something and I have my watch on and be like, ding, ding. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so I have to take all of my electronic things and put them on airplane mode. I still keep them by my side, but I, I have them off and set away so that they can't disturb me. So you're in this space, you've come to your this calm center, they say a center. Uh, I really just think of it as like really feeling this uh, openness in my heart of like the whole world is so damn magical. Like there are so many miracles that happen all the time. And that if this really was from a big bang and we all got organized into what we are, holy moly, like there is, you know, the bigness of it. And so I just open myself up to that. And then my mind is kind of blown and in that like, whoa, anything is possible. That's where I get myself to. For, for each of you, it might be different. Music definitely helps for me. I've added in some channels on YouTube that just, it's like eight hours. It'll never pause on you, which is perfect. So that you can have music going in the background if that helps you focus, any kind of chime music. Uh, the waves at the beach help me. I love that. It gets me into kind of the flow of like repeating stuff over and over. So you found your spot. You've made yourself centered, you've grounded yourself, you've decided on your intention, you're there. Now, what do you say? <laughs> oh, universe and stars up above, oh, holy earth. And you know, whatever you want, what, literally whatever you want. You can make your spell words anything. I go short and sweet. I want to tell the universe exactly what I want and I want to be to the point. A um, couple months ago, we did a protection spell for my sister. She has some exes that act crazy and we, the three of us had to get together to do it. And we just wanted to bring as much force as we could. And the three of us trying to remember stuff and say it all together, we probably would have died laughing. I can't say that the focus would have really been there, 
but in our heads, we could get to that place. And so I gave everybody a picture to imagine in their head. Imagine, for, so for her, it was protection. I imagined her in her bed, asleep, safe, like tucked in her covers, just like the most peaceful, safe person you've ever seen. And I pictured that. And then I just kept repeating things like, keep her safe, like let no harm come. And this was just stuff, not rehearsed, but what I felt. I let my emotions take over my mind as far as what I wanted to push out to the universe and keeping her safe and feeling like she's going to be safe and not letting her worry about her safety. And I just kept, we just kept going with that. So you get to flow, right? This would be when you're in flow, like all time is gone. You have no idea what's going on around you because you're in this focus. Because we had three of us, we used incense to kind of time it because everybody's focus was going to be a little different. You can use a candle. I, um, eh. They have things called chime candles, spell candles. They're really small. They burn pretty quickly. Um, they're much better for outside use because a lot of the times it's not a great wax. It, they want it to burn quickly so it can leave like over time black residue on your walls from the smoke. But this would be another thing that sort of sets the time for your spell. So say you know you want to, and this is through practice, you want to sit there for, you know, 30 minutes or you want to go as long as you possibly can. This will tell you in time how long you've really been doing it. And it's amazing that once you get in flow, you're like, holy cow, my candle's almost gone. I've really been doing this for like 20 minutes. What? <laughs> so we also, incense are a great way to do that. And it just sort of helps you keep time or understand when you've done enough. Because there have been times at the end of spells where it's like, did I go long enough? Did I push enough energy out there? Did I create an effect? This can be a confidence booster to say, you you go for as long as you can and focus and flow while the candle burns. And if you when you open your eyes or when you come to and the candle's still burning, I just sit there and I let it burn all the way down. And I, I stay in gratitude. I stay in my mood. Even though I'm not focused on the spell event anymore, I'm just there letting it all happen, like imagining it radiating out into the universe, these changes that I want to affect until the candle is gone, until the incense burns down. Those are two ways that I use um, sort of a timed or like to know what you're doing, how long you're doing it. Those two things. Uh, all right, bringing your emotions. Oh, <laughs> see all over the place. For starting and stopping, we started to talk about ceremonial magic, which I am not really familiar with at all, besides looking it up in a book and trying to follow it. Um, personally, I want you guys to know what I do. I have a candle that smells amazing. First off, I love smells and sounds. and Anything that does your five senses, it brings it all together. So my, my thing is to, I was gonna light it actually, <laughs> and I've lost my matches. <laughs> um, I get my candle and then I focus on it and I say, by lighting this candle, I open up connection to my team of light, meaning my spirit guides, anybody on the other side helping me with my magic. I open my third eye and my crown chakra because I want to receive, I want to feel that energy come down through me. And once I light this candle, that's pretty much my ritual starting. That lets the universe know, that lets my spirit guides know, I'm starting. This is when it gets serious. Everybody behind me, ready to go, let's do this. That's, that's my ceremonial start, if you will. You could do anything, as long as it means something to you. Lighting a candle, lighting that incense, letting your guides know, letting the universe know, my intention has started, this is the beginning, I'm gonna stay in it as long as I can, I'm pushing it out to affect change. And then whenever you're ready, and th this is also a hard thing for people, when is the spell done? When are you complete? Is there, there's not a bell or a timer that goes off, right? You could, the candle could run out or not run out. The incense could run out or not run out. But when your focus is done, you're done. And let yourself be done. Go, I've given this all the energy that I can. I, you know, I did what I could and I'm done. So my ending to my ceremony and whatever I do is I grab my candle and I say, something to the effect. Now that I'm on the spot, I'm like, what do I say? <laughs> I usually, I'm just like, you know, thank, first off, I thank everything. Thank you for being here with me and hearing me and the guidance and every, you know, blessing in my life basically. But I've ended it. I don't say closed circle because I don't think of it as a circle, but you know, I'm ending this or this is done. So mode it be um, any, any little phrase you want to end it. And then that is also the signal to the universe that they're like, 
all right, she's done. Let's go make it work. <laughs> Energy starts running out everywhere to make sure things get done. So the most important thing here to recognize is that each of you can create your own start of your ritual and stop of your ritual. And ritual sounds very formal, but mm -hmm. practice. The start of it, the end of it. You decide that. It has to feel good to you. If it doesn't feel good to you, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> and the whole part of this is getting your mind in that thing that, like, it is possible. If I believe it to my core, I know that this is going to happen getting to that place. So anything that you can add to that, that makes it more about you, more personal for you, more emotional for you, all helps with the energy pushing out. 